Welcome back to another Thursday upload uh, from your boys at the Buffalo Happy Hour. And today we have an educational episode for you all. I hope you all enjoyed last week's episode where we did the top five bourbons under $50. If you missed it, you can go back and check that out on our YouTube channel. We did some amazing reviews of some of our favorite products under $50 that you can get really at anywhere and keep a nice budget option there at the house. And today we're going to educate you on proof points. So, Mike, I'm going to ask you this. What is your preferred proof point? Great question. When I started, I could not handle anything over 86 proof. Now, my preferred proof point is realistically anywhere from 94 to 120 because there's a a giant range of products, which I know um, there's going to be people that are deep into the whiskey world that are like, that's a giant jump because it is. However, it depends on the day of the week and what I'm drinking and my mood. So chill. But yes, a much higher proof point there now than what I started for sure. So when you're talking about proof, proof is just the alcohol by volume, the ABV, and you double that. So when you're getting alcohol from distilled spirits, you're taking your mash, which contains yeast, and sugar, and that's what's being combined together to create alcohol. That's how you get alcohol in your distilled spirits. Proof point is just doubling that to get the proof of the whiskey. Now, whiskey has to be bottled at no more than eight or no less than 80 proof, and it has to enter the barrel at no less than 125 proof. So when we look at these options here, we have a 90 proof right here, which is the Devil's River small batch. We have 117 proof right here, which is their barrel strength. 120 proof distiller select and 128 proof their single barrel. Now, a lot of you are probably asking, Derek, you just said 125 is the maximum it can go in. And we'll talk about why this is able to be 128. But when you're talking about proof points and why it's important to know yours is exactly what Mike said. If you're having a glass of whiskey or you're going out to a whiskey bar and you want to order yourself a glass of whiskey, it's important to know what proof point each one is and really where your tolerance level is because that is going to dictate how enjoyable of an experience this is. Do you remember when you were younger or when you first tried whiskey and you had a product that was too high in proof? Yeah, it was horrendous. What, it was what like, did you experience? It was drinking fire, massive stomach indigestion. Um, my chest was very warm, and it was the yeah. face – did, Almost immediately. Did you get any flavors out of that whiskey at all? No, not at all. And a lot of people have asked us, uh, Patreon specifically, of what about the big named companies that exist, like Jim Beam, Jack Daniels, and so on and so forth. And those guys are generally no more than 86, unless you buy something very specific that they make, um, just because they know that it's going to be used at a lot of bars, et cetera, for cocktails so on and so forth, right? So they're generally about 80 proof. In that, there's a lot of water that cut it down to get it, or to get it down to 80 proof. So for us, especially being in Buffalo, because of course we're a Buffalo-based podcast, we're a beer city. And a lot of people are very comfortable going into a bar and ordering a lager. And they're like, hey, what is this? And then right on the menu, it'll say 7%, right? Or it'll be five if it's a commercial beer you know budweiser etc and then everyone knows okay i can have 12 and drive (laughs) just because in our city that's normal right generally speaking we have the bmis to intake that level of alcohol but also in general people know their tolerance for a beer i'm good if i have four beers if i go out Five may be a little bit pushing it, and then six, there's no way I'm definitely going to have someone drive um, and get me home safely. With whiskey, most people don't understand what they're doing when they're first showing up to a bar, right? Beginners. And then that is generally what you should look at, and that's what we're talking about, is if you're in a whiskey bar or out to an establishment and you're looking at the menu, you're basing your tolerance level and coinciding that with your preferred proof point to then know how much of something you can handle. So easy example, if Derek and I go out for dinner with our wives, I can drink Bullet, Jameson, I mean, anything that's generally considered well and be totally fine, not have any worries at all. Um, 
I understand, but also we're not doing a ton of mixed cocktails when right. we go out. We generally just stick to having things neat just because then we understand, okay, I'm watching you pour this. That's about a double shot. Cool. I'm going to sip this, stretch it out for about an hour and a half. I don't have to worry about it, quote unquote, going bad, getting flat, changing its massive dynamics to where it's not enjoyable anymore, getting cold and or warm. It's it's really okay. And that's kind of why we're doing this video is because when you're diagnosing your own tolerance level and trying to make it work for you when you're out, that's what that's the number you look at yep. is your proof. Then I'm sure Derek is going to dive into the tasting notes profile. So as you're more accustomed to drinking whiskey, your palate's going to change. When I first started drinking, Jameson was very hot. Um, I could, like the taste of it was just nuts. Scotch was absolutely out of the question. And then now, Jameson tastes like sugar water. Mm-hmm. Um, I can probably have a good amount of it in a sitting, not feel affected at all, and wake up the next day and feel totally fine. If it's a single batch 1792 or anything 1792, I mean, dude, their small batch is like 94 proof. Right. If I have a good amount of that, I'm toast, right? So if I'm trying to enjoy myself, that's what I'm cognizant of. And then now I can handle scotch. I actually pick up different things in bourbons and different things in rye and so on and so forth. But again, you're always cognizant of the proof point. It, yeah, it's all about acclimating your palate. I mean, like Mike said earlier with the beer, you have your regular ales, your lagers. And then if you throw a stout in front of somebody that just started drinking beer, they're going to be like, this is disgusting. I don't want to have this. Mm-hmm. So when you're talking about proof, uh, again, it has to go in and distilled at no la- no more than 125 proof. And the way that they get it down to the preferred proof point is by adding water. Devil's River does an amazing job. We have a Devil's River line up here if you're just listening because they are something that we both have on hand very regularly. And they do a good job at demonstrating different proof points for a similar type product. All these are bourbon. They're just different variations of the same mash bill and different processes, which we'll talk about again. But in order to get 125 proof thing uh, whiskey coming out of this still down to a 90, you add it with water. Devil's River uses uh, limestone water through their Devil's River actually in Texas. And that is how they're able to get the product from 120 proof, which is the distiller select, down to a 90 proof, which is a small batch. So when you're tasting small batch and when you're tasting these smaller or lesser proof whiskeys, you are going to be picking up a lot of the notes more easier because your mouth isn't going to be inundated with ethanol, high proof uh, characteristics like very spicy. Uh, your your palate isn't going to be picking up a lot of the notes if you're not acclimated to that proof point. So that's why we always recommend starting with a lower proof point. If you don't have a lower proof point and let's say you only had this 117 proof, you can always add a couple drops of water because you're basically doing what the distiller does in your glass by adding water to reduce that proof point. So if you're not picking up what you want to because it's too hot for you, always recommend adding a couple drops of water. And by drops, we mean drops. Don't go crazy. It's just drops, drops of water. Yeah, like an eyedropper, literal drops. Yeah. Um, most people have like a slow melt giant square and or circle cube. Just be cognizant of the ratio, mm-hmm. just because you don't want to totally dilute the whiskey that's in your glass. But again, the way to enjoy whiskey is how you want to enjoy whiskey. Mm-hmm. There's no wrong way. We just encourage people to not oversaturate what's in their glass yeah. with water. To try it how the distiller wanted. At least try it that way. And then if you don't enjoy it, obviously do whatever you want with it after. Yes. So 90 proof, you're adding quite a bit of water to bring it down to 90. This barrel strength, barrel strength means, we did a great video on this as well, uh, probably about a, what, a year ago at this point? Yeah, With probably. the differences between the terminology of whiskey, which we're going to do another episode on. But barrel strength literally means that they take it right out of the barrel and put it into a bottle. That is... There's no adding of water. There's no removing of water outside of the evaporation process that naturally occurs. But barrel strength is just taking it right out of the barrel and putting it into a bottle. Whereas small batch means that you're combining the barrels together, you're blending them to create a consistent uh, product, and then you're releasing it at a lower proof point. 
You have over here their distillery select, which is – this is interesting and specific to Devil's River because they wanted to release – Mike Cameron, the uh, dis- head distiller over at Devil's River, wanted to release an iteration of their product that is specific to his liking, which is his proof point, his tasting notes, and all that stuff. So this is a combination of basically all this stuff but released at a barrel strength as well. And then this one up here is a single barrel. The single barrel is a little bit different because you're taking one single barrel – obviously, that's what it says – and you're making bottles out of that. So the consistency isn't going to be there from bottle to bottle. But that's how you're able to get a proof point over 125. When you're in the hot sun and the humidity of Texas, there is obviously the possibility of a lot of angel share being lost, which is the amount of whiskey or water that's evaporating due to the high climate and humidity. And if the water is evaporating at a higher rate than the whiskey is, the proof point is going to go up. So even though it went into the barrel at 125, which is the legal requirement, it can exit the barrel at above 125, depending on the humidity and the loss of water to angel share. That's right. What he said. Oh, yeah. So now that you've tried this, which one is your favorite out of all four of these? And which one do you recommend people go pick up to try themselves? My personal favorite is here. Um, the product that my camera put out was just unbelievable. We are very lucky to have the premium batch one Mm -hmm. and specifically bottle 5869, but having 120 proof specifically tailored by the head distiller is just something that is unbelievably hard to come by and, you know, really hard to match. Mm -hmm. So what you're getting in this is sensational for everybody to have. We recommend Devil's River in general just because our price point is outstanding. I think all four of these, like the most expensive one is 60 bucks, I think. Yeah, it's which ridiculous. Is wild. So this bottle's 30 bucks, and it's so versatile. You can literally do anything with it between making cocktails, having it neat, having it with a small ice cube, and then just enjoying your night. You're not going to feel horrendous afterwards. Of course, I mean – their climate down in San Antonio is great, but then the fact that their limestone content is so high in Devil's River that water just adds so many more complexities mm-hmm. to it that allows you to really pick up the tasting profiles that they want you to. So this is my recommendation for everybody. Again, it's like 30 bucks, so you're not going to break yep. the bank. You're not going to feel bad drinking it. Yeah, and again, we recommend Devil's River because you can get all similar products in different proof points, so you can experience this yourself. And to that point, let us know in the comments down below. Do you have a preferred proof point? Have you noticed this trend with whiskeys where there are some proof points that you just can't handle because they're too hot, or there's some proof points that you like? I mean, Mike said that his range is from 94 to 120. Yeah. Yeah, mine is like around that 105. That's my perfect proof point for me. And it's just it varies with everybody so let us know in the comments down below what is your preferred proof point and if you do pick up any of these bottles let us know what you think all right well thank you everybody for tuning in to today's thursday upload if you missed last thursday again it was the top five whiskeys under 50 dollars. these are going to be series of episodes and uploads that we do from here going forward so if there's any ideas of whiskeys that or categories that you want us to review or topics you want us to discuss we can talk proof points we can talk the distilling process we can talk whatever you want so if you are interested in any of that leave a comment down below but uh if you're going to pick up any of these remember to be responsible especially when it comes to proof points because this is a uh, an area that should have a lot of focus on it uh, so be careful of what you're drinking be under, understand what you're drinking but always drink responsibly be a good person and like do not litter we're out <laughs>